हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग ग्रेट आई एम गौरव साहनी फ्रॉम कैप्टन कुक नोइंग द वर्ल्ड टुडे वी आर बैक विद आर ऑल न्यू वीडियो इन ने जे आर एफ सीरीज दैट इज ऑफ जी मॉर्फोलॉजी फ्रेंड्स बिफोर स्टार्ट द वीडियो एंड द लेक्चर आई वॉन्ट टू शो यू दैट दिस इज आर वेबसाइट दैट इज डब्ल्यू 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 डॉट कैप्टन कुक इंडिया डॉट वर्ल्ड प्रेस डॉट कॉम and all the latest updates and in fact all the knowledge about geography and related world are available are going to available over here after uh, 1st of january please do visit this website just after this video and get to know more and this is our facebook page do follow us on facebook for all the latest updates and this is our youtube channel please subscribe to us okay friends before gonna start the lecture on uh, geomorphology i want to tell you what all subjects comes under in geography as uh, i have explained earlier what is geography and all the things and geography includes the six main subjects or sub branches those are physical geography human geography geography of world geography of india geography of thoughts and techniques of geographical analysis and the rest are the sub branches or the sub subjects of the main subjects in geography friends these all are the contents or the topics what we going to study and uh, have a look okay friends what is geomorphology geomorphology is a science which studies the earth surface along with its processes and different landforms it is a greek word geomorphologos which means the study in fact the scientific study of the origin and evolution of the topography and bathymetric features created by physical chemical or biological processes on the earth the earth surface is constantly being altered we know it under the combined influence of human and natural factors basically it's a discourse on the form of the earth friends please look over here i want your attention to this part now this is earth which is 23 and a half degree tilted and these all are imaginary lines i'm telling you the fact right now this is equator 0 degree this is tropic of cancer tropic of capricorn south pole north pole and friends before going further i want to tell you what is continental drift theory i'm not going into continental drift theory i'm just telling you what is continental drift with this diagram or image i would say as you can see before billions or millions of years there is an hypothesis which names continental drift theory under that hypothesis and that hypothesis says that alia the earth was having one land and one ocean that is pangea and penthalassa respectively that all the land comes under into all the in fact continents come under one land that is called pangea and all the water is only one ocean was coming in what uh, was used to come in one ocean that is penthalassa and further it you know divided by the movement of plate tectonics and the continental drift how the the continental the continents in fact moves apart and all the plates or the plate tectonics came into existence after this 
and earlier it was Laurasia and Gondwana land which moves apart between there there was an ocean which there was a sea called Tethys Ocean or Tethys Sea I will explain in earlier and you or you can study this on our website thank you the study of geomorphology is divided into three main subjects or subdivisions which are directly or indirectly interrelated or independent towards each other which are structure processes and evolution that how or which by what structure the earth is being formed that includes plate tectonics diatrophism volcanic actions and it includes the further disposition of the continents ocean basins the building of mountains along with folds and faults and so many things the process by which process those are in existence that called that may be of gravity or human or natural interventions and the evolution is an analyzed with reference to the dynamic structure and the dynamic processes and uh, this is please look over here on the right corner these are the relief features of the different landforms these are first order landforms second order and the third order similarly like over here i'm sorry for my drawing guys uh in the first order of landform the oceanic crust and the continental crust comes under and in second order of landforms the plains plateaus oceanic ridges uh, ocean uh, plateaus and whatever the highlands which are being present over here comes in red after the crust or the secondary part and in the third order of landforms the sand dunes glaciers and ridges sorry uh, reefs and what are being present on second order of landforms and after in fact of second order of landforms are third order of landforms okay friends this is our third point a topic where we want to study about earth which includes interior structures and isostasis first of all i would tell you to know about the interior structure of the earth we have very less evidences because we are living on the surface and we don't know what is beneath us around 500 1000 6300 and so on kilometers so we have we are studying all these things through various sub subjects or sub uh, theories under different subjects before that i will tell you the shape of the earth is geoid which means there is a slight depression on the poles over here and a bulge on the equator okay and the temperature of the earth increases in the interior of the earth whenever we go beneath the earth surface almost 30 uh, of every 32 meters there is an increase of 1 degree celsius in temperature to know about the interior of the structure interior structure of the earth we study seismology it's a science that studies earthquake in short and presently along with seismology we focused on to know about the earth geophysical aspects geological aspects and mathematical studies along with seismology to go further in seismology there are three type of waves those are called seismic waves before going to that i want to tell whenever an earthquake occurs it may be due to volcanic eruption or plate movements or plate tectonic movements it means whenever a volcano erupts with very high intensity or with a blast so that may cause a depression or some energy release 
beneath the surface or whenever the plate movements happen during some tensions or pressure usually release so that point is called focus and perpendicular to that on the surface is called epicenter and the seismology is being studies studied by three type of waves those are all seismic waves i've told earlier also and the following are p waves s waves and l waves p waves are also known as push and primary waves they are like sound waves causing displacement of the particles they are not much of dangerous and uh, they can pass all three medium that are solid liquid and gaseous and they are the fastest among three almost 1.7 times faster and with the velocity uh, its velocity decreases in water that is around 8 gram per meter cube and the highest is 13 gram per meter cube imagine this is uh, a focus this is epicenter and these are the primary waves okay and this is a shadow zone friends shadow zone is an area or a zone where a particular wave was unable or is unable to reach that may be of different or uh, regions that can be of uh, like wave is not able to uh, carry it from uh, you know water or gases or some particles are over here or some depression some other energy is present and so on in s waves it is also called transfer or shear waves or secondary waves in fact uh, because they come after primary they are in motion which affects the particles at right angle to the direction of the waves of propagation and in liquid the medium they got absorbed it means they cannot travel from liquid medium beneath the surface or anywhere and s waves is concave due to their increased velocity and increasing depth it is also called body waves because they travel from the body of the earth here l waves in l waves it is also called long waves and they are the most destructive one and they usually come after p and s primary and secondary waves they are they got ob uh, observed on the surface of the earth usually and that's why they called surface waves they are the most destructive one and l waves carries most of the destruction to human or mankind or to the resources and they usually fade out in depth and can travel in both water and solid medium it means they cannot travel through gaseous stage states i've told you a shadow zone like over here this is a shadow zone of s wave like an earthquake generates of uh, generate over here these are p waves after that s waves and over here s wave cannot reach because of the different uh, moho and gutenberg discontinuity you can say it and the liquid state of magma or plasmaic uh, seema is present over here and this is a diagram which shows different layer uh, different uh, waves of the earthquake which includes p s and surface and with different intensity like uh, when earthquake occurs so it generated p waves after that after some time s waves and after some time the surface wave or l wave which are which are the most destructive one okay to study the composition of the earth we need to study about the layers of the earth it means there are different layers of the earth beneath the land and its uh, concentration characteristics are also different from each other the term of crust mantle and core was coined by soes an austrian geologist 
and all the knowledge about the uh, beneath the surface i've told you earlier can be studied by seismic geophysics and geological aspects and these three uh, layers are also called as sial sima nife like sial is the uppermost layer of the earth crust is also called crust oveha principal elements are silica and aluminum that's why called sial and the density ranges between 2.75 g metric cube to uh, 2.90 gram metric cube the thickness of the sial is greater on the continents while on the ocean bottom is comparatively thinner the thickness varies from 20 km to 550 to 100 km in the mountain ranges respectively rocks like granite genesis predominance of oveha and just after the crust or sial there is a discontinuity in the layer which is called moho discontinuity and it is observed or are uh, discovered by morovic you can search about it in fact comment down below what is moho moho discontinuity and in sima this is a uh, an intermediate layer extending below sial layer just after it which is uh, often called mantle the principal elements which are present over here are silica and magnesium the density ranges from this to this and mantle is divided into three upper parts extends between 50 km to and lower mantle till 700 km and it is also the deepest point of the earthquake it means earthquake never uh, happen after 700 km and mantle is separated from core and another discontinuity is present over here that is gutenberg discontinuity which is around 2900 km of depth and which shows the difference in state as core is in liquid friends okay i will tell you what is moho and gutenberg disc- discontinuity see over here like this is a crust and after just after the crust when mantle comes like over here the upper part of the mantle is usually in liquid state it is not like water it is thick material like toothpaste we can say it like like plasmatic uh, material and that generates a discontinuity in different states of present over here so this is called mo and over here in core is called gutenberg and the one is nife nife is the innermost or the uh, deepest most layer of the earth which is often called core the predominated elements are nickel and iron that's oh, sorry nickel and ferrous i'm sorry for this nickel and ferrous it's almost similar uh, average density is this and core is divided into two parts that is lower and upper core and it is till 2900 km to 550 km till 6300 km the inner core behaves as a liquid and that is due to excessive pressure guys here is a diagram which shows image in fact which shows a uh, different points under crust mantle core their composition along with the boundaries and their depth with its pressure and other important needed materials and it is also be studied as lithosphere asthenosphere and centrosphere as sial sima nife core mantle core lithos asthenosphere and uh, centrosphere these are the different names of it the solid part of the earth of about 100 km it is a rigid and comprises of sial that is also called lithosphere and solid lithosphere floats over the weak asthenosphere more discontinuity it comprises of sima and it is in molten state 
the innermost layer is called centrosphere and it behaves like a solid in spite of its heavy very high temperature which is like in plasma state it comprises of nephe okay and next one is isostasy it is derived from a greek word in fact guys all the geography is almost almost derived from greek and latin word majorities of greek word which means state in state of balance isostasy means the state of balance american geologist dutton used the term in 1889 study about it and the gravitational equilibrium that exists between continent and ocean floors and mountain plateaus plains are on the on the rotating earth is being discovered by him various scholars have given various views on it i am taking two main uh, views uh in uh, over here that are of pratt view and eddy's view friends according to pratt it is a gravitational attraction of the himalayas the complete theory is usually revolves around himalaya or the plains plateaus and mountains which are like himalayas only on the focus so uh, according to him the gravitational attraction of the himalayas was less than the mass represented by these mountains because the mountains were made of much lighter materials according to prat he says the mountains are of less density of material they are made of less density material or rock and as compared the mountains which are uh, you know uh, uh, what we call like floating on the hard rock which are having a uh, higher uh, density and the plains and the pl uh, plateaus lower than the rocks of the ocean floor in other words there were there these are an inverse relationship between height and density as the higher the region or the rock or lies mountain the lesser the density or the lower the rock or area or the product or water or whatever is the higher the density okay and uh, in airy's view he says that in fact airy gives an example of uh, wooden uh, blocks okay over here he he says he in fact he said that the continents which are made of lighter shale are floating over the substratum which is built of denser sema it is almost opposite and he stated he stated that himalayas are floating on the denser rock below and the weight of the mountains are balancing the complete process and he gives an example like when an iceberg float in the ice only 1/10 of the iceberg is above the water and the rest nine parts are remain immersed or immersed in water like this is airy's view imagine this is a mountain which is or a, a you know iceberg this is 1/10 part and this is the rest nine part which is beneath the water and airy assume that that the continents are uh, and islands are resting or rather floating in a denser mass in seal which are acting as hydrostatic equilibrium okay and as a combination of both the former uh, postulated difference between airy's and pratt view is the form the uniform density with varying thickness and the later a uniform depth with varying density as there is a difference in density 
with reference to height along with there is defense of uh, uh, you know presence of uh, block which is different on the basis of depth and concentration in high density or low density study more on our website yeah in earth movement the pl the surface of the earth is keep changing with time we know it and another features are permanent we also know it know, uh, know it and physics also says this the change in the surface takes place with two different forces of the land, of the earth one is internal and the one is external which is also called intrusive and extrusive respectively in ext the extrusive the intrusive forces which are being generated or originate originates within the earth example tectonic and volcanic activities and movements extrusive forces are the effects from the earth that is on earth from outside that is due to wind water and human interventions in earth movement following terms come under plate tectonics fold faults earthquake and volcano plate tectonic it is an extended and more comprehensive version of the theory of sea floor spreading according to the hypothesis of plate tectonic the earth crust lithosphere can be divided into six major and six minor parts means the complete earth after the continents being you know apart from each other like remember the theory of pangaea and panthalassa when the continents removes uh, or you know spread or moves apart they divided into six major and six minor plates and all the concepts revolves around and in the plate movements only in geomorphology the major plates are indian plate or indonesian uh, indo australian plate pacific plate american plate that includes north and south african plate euro european plate and the th sixth one is antarctica plate these are the major continents also so remember minor plates arabian plate philippines plate cocos plate caribbean plate nazca plate this is not in kashmir okay <laughs> or the east pacific plate and the sixth one is scotia plate see over here before uh, going to plate tectonics i want to cover this also then i'll show you all the six major and six minor plates in plate tectonics plate margin and plate boundaries plays an important role plate margins are the edge or marginal apart or marginal part of the neighboring plate can you see okay and nearly all seismic volcanic and tectonic activities are confined to the all plate margins the three types are collision destruction and conservative these are the example which are being present on the earth ring of fire over here constructive plate the plates are being construct over here the plates are being dist destructed and over here the plates are being collide how because of this collision margin the himalaya is still growing whenever we study about himalaya we always uh, you know read or go to know that himalaya is himalayan range is the youngest mountain range and it is still growing or you know to which means that the gondwana plate or the indian plate is still moving towards the north and eurasian eurasian plate which leads to a pressure between it and the earth or the sorry himalaya is still growing upward and plate boundary plate boundary is the boundary of the surface trace of the zone of motion between the two plates like convergent divergent and transform 
see over here imagine this is uh, the complete earth okay land water ocean and beneath okay this is a volcanic activity a volcano is being you know uh, erupted over, over here these are plate movements this is going down this is being generated over here they are moving apart and over here also moving apart over here they are you know coming apart okay so the complete thing is this is transform boundary this is divergent boundary and this is convergent boundary okay see over here this map world map shows the plate boundaries margin and earthquake index divergent plate convergent continental shelf transform zone major hotspot for the, of the volcano and notable earthquake <coughs> i'm sorry this is a ring of fire this is a divergent boundary african plate indian plate eurasian plate american plate okay and antarctica plate you can see it yeah after plate tectonics there are, are two important uh, you know concept which are fold and faults folding refers to bending or crumpling of rocks it is a result of the compression or the comprehensive earth movement as when the plate movements occur as two plates are moving apart or you know, uh, you know moving towards each other though they create bending or crumpling near the lines of weakness these forces can cause widespread crumpling or folding usually along well marked zones indicating lines of weakness okay so these uh, activities usually occur through the earth movement in the line of weaknesses the following are the types of uh, fold symmetrical asymmetrical anticlinorium and synclinorium overfolds recumbent folds and naps <coughs> i'm sorry this is a symmetrical fold this is anticline and this is syncline okay imagine this is indian plate and this is eurasian plate okay forget about it the indian plate is pushing as much as indian plate can to european plate so between there is a huge you know bending or crumpling is being generated in the line of weaknesses that is of tethys ocean that generated himalaya not it the complete theory is like this this asymmetrical where there is no symmetry like a crest is available no trough over here this is anticline i have told and this is syncline this is syncline and this is limb the body type and in synclorium and anticlinorium over here this is anticlinorium and this is synclinorium where there is a chaos or a complex synclinor um, anticline that leads to anticlinorium over here and synclinorium over here this is over fold like over one side the pressure is being done but on the beneath the less pressure is being done which give generation or generates over fold and the folding movement in this are very intense a symmetrical in incline or anticline is being pushed right over 
whereas the rest is fine and in a ring uh, recumbent, uh, recumbent zones or folds over here and the next is fold it is a fracture or a rupture in the rock or the displacement of the rock strata that is on either side of the plane of fracture related on one another or types of folds i'm sorry for this <laughs> this <laughs> it created a chaos this is a types of folds in fact see over here it shows the example of normal and uh, reverse fold fault sorry and these are the sub parts of fault it is a fracture and fold it is a bending it is a fracture okay this is a fault plane this is a thrust plane over here the following are fault scraps fault line scraps plateau and basins fault blocks host rift valley and dropping in faults the fault scraps and fault line scraps these are the vertical movements of rocks along with the line of fault produces over here or fault scrap or escarpment presenting an almost vertical face over here that is almost almost of vertical okay this called a vertical fault this is due to a fraction or a, sorry a fracture in fact and plateaus and basins are these are the uplift of the rock or uh, fault in the you know rock horst when an individual fault block is sharply defined like over here like and uh, fault valley a uh, fault that may determine the line of valley this this is opposite of this okay next okay what is earthquake it is a catastrophe in which sudden movement or disturbance in the rocks in the interior of the earth that generates vibration and spread over in all the directions earthquake either caused by volcanic eruptions or by sudden movement of plates i have explained earlier the in volcanic type of volcan uh, earthquake are volcanic earthquakes and tectonic earthquakes the distribution of the earthquake zone are random and it is uh, you know distributed all over the globe the major zones are circum pacific zones mediterranean trans Aust uh, asiatic zone mid oceanic ridges or african rift system of zone what i have uh, shown you two slides prior this uh, map of india which shows the major earthquake zone of india these are the major api centers along with dangerous zone which is in the zone of uh, you know this is uh, himalayan belt it is over here but sometimes this is along with brahmaputra river and gangatic plain over here but himalaya is from here range is from here to here and above and beneath these himalayan ranges the complete area of is in major zones of india for earthquake volcanic eruptions it is an activity in which molten magma erupts from inside of the earth through volcanic vent over the surface and uh, when the molten materials the volcano volcanic molten materials are present beneath the earth's surface they are magma and when they come out they are called lava and the different components of uh, 
volcanic eruptions are or volcano are explosive pipe this vent this cone this like over here this is being generated this is cone and the type of volcanoes are basically they are you know classified on the basis of their eruption type and the mode of eruptions hawaiian type strombolian volcanian type and pelican after that vesuvius the fissure uh, eruption type or quiet eruption they are the you know loud type and lava which includes lava flood or lava flow mud flow and few more rules and the second one is classification on the basis of periodic of eruption active volcanoes dormant and extant these like uh, hawaiian type dormants are like sometimes sometimes they do or extants like they don't the world distribution of volcanoes are uh, they are distributed on the globally like earthquake there is no fixed place except few but it is a well marked and understood because they are found in a well defined zone or belt what i have explained earlier the three major belts for the zone of volcano in the world are circum pacific belt mid continental belt and mid atlantic belt intraplate uh, volcanoes these are scattered volcanoes found in the part of continents this map shows the same the major earthquake lava and volcanoes globally have a look okay in himalayan origin this is the important part where the concept of generation or the origin of himalaya is being explained over here the present day continental formations on the world are like geologically speaking is relatively recent like from 250 million years ago and there was a super continent called giant super uh, you know pangaea which is one land what i have showed you in slide 3 and uh, after the collision of over here indian plate and eurasian plate when they come uh, moves toward each other or uh, indian plate moves to upward to meet laurasia plate this is also called eurasian plate as a result the two continent continued crashing into each other with neither able to sink below the other because of hard land or dense uh, mid uh, rock of both the continents and there was earlier a continent sorry uh, sea that is called tethys sea so that tethys sea due to pressure and you know fault sorry fold this leads to hills and the finally the rising himalaya the rising tibetan plateau like over here see indian plate eurasian plate and it is being you know going upward after this which are nowadays which is himalayas okay geomorphic processes uh, these are the processes which shape the earth surface that can be divided into two broad uh, categories and these are of endogenetic uh, processes and exogenetic processes endogenetic means internal and exogenetic means external and this they perform the changes in the remove of material they basically you know changes the presence of these materials of the land through uh, natural and human factors they include weathering mass wasting in weathering it is a distinct disintegration and decomposition of rocks that are through physical chemical and biological uh, weathering processes uh, physical weathering includes physical factors chemical chemical and biological biological factors uh, which are uh, like in physical uh, weathering it includes moisture and water insulation that is temperature frost and wind in chemical weathering it includes oxygen carbon dioxide hydrogen the chemical reaction between it and in biological weathering they act as agents 
with the vegetation animals decaying through microorganisms or uh, different organisms uh, and uh, mass waste thing it is a detachment or downward movement of the rock you can also say is uh, like uh, you know a broader concept of landslide in mass wasting falling things are uh, you know falling movements are included they those are vertical lateral and diagonal in vertical movements they include fall and subsidence that is of the ground surface and in lateral uh, movements they include slides and uh, spreading in the third one that is diagonal movements they that includes creeping slide and flows you can study further on over here after the launch of the website and the important terms which are for geomorphic processes are endogenetic forces and ex exogenetic forces i have explained over here i'll explain again also endogenetic forces or the processes are the you know processes which are being done beneath the earth surfaces that are uh, plate tectonic movements earthquake volcanic eruptions and etc and exogenetic processes are above the surface which includes water wind um, other agents of it and human interventions and other things in what is denudation it is uh, rocks disintegration or decomposition along with its movement or lower elevations in weathering it is uh, it is in weathering it is a dis uh, disintegration and decomposition of rocks or the strata through a process which is i have explained over here and erosion is a removal of weathered materials through the process of uh, and it is also being you know traveled or you know moved from one place to another uh, the erosion is also done by different parts like ground and other other like and the movement is done by ground water rainfall humans and different different things you all can study it is a static part you all can study over here and i'll be present few diagrams for the you know explanation of these uh, topics very easily over here evolution of the landforms the landform refer to the morphology and the character of the land surface resulting from the interactions of physical processes and crystal movements with geological and surface layers the landforms are being you know or of different times types in fact landforms are basically different morphology features okay and there are different type of lands or landforms the different type of landforms are fluvial landforms aeolian landforms glacier and karst topography the fluvial landforms are you know well explained they are made through the flow of water or the flow that includes v shaped valleys gorges uh, waterfalls meanders oxbow lake deltas and so on things Eolian features are or or the landforms which are developed by wind that includes uh, mushroom rocks sand dunes in general the glacial landforms are the landform which are you know present or available in glaciers region specifically in himalayan or arctic or antarctic or uh, you know these areas the major areas like morans nunataks hanging valleys horns uh, u shaped valleys and so on and in karst topography it is a disintegration or the decomposition or uh, you know air yeah, decomposition of uh, limestone or limestone rocks and through different uh, chemical weathering and processes Uh, you you can study all these points or all these major topics on our website it are very it is very well in explained or written over here it is just needed one time of reading for you guys and you'll get to know 
and a rejuvenation it it means the acceleration of erosive power of the fluvial processes and which cause a various factor which caused by various factors it are basically dynamic eustatic eustatic and static it is basically an acceleration of erosive power for the fluvial processes of the in the in the erosion okay friends that is it for today i hope you like it don't forget to subscribe share and like our efforts do watch our different series follow us on facebook this is our website all the static content whatever is you know uh, coming in geography along with geomorphology and for the subjects you can say, read it over here and subscribe over here thank you so much good luck and best wishes for your exam do well goodbye